If you have seen Dinosaur, Prehistoric Planet, or the latest season of Camp Cretaceous, then you need no introduction to the Carnotaurus. Its bull-like horns and ferocious image has left a lasting mark on audiences, and its features are so unique, they have led to some pretty terrifying and fitting nicknames, such as the Devil-Horned Dinosaur. But even its nicknames and appearance do not reveal all the secrets, which helped make the Carnotaurus the apex predator of late Cretaceous South America. The Carnotaurus first appeared on paleontologist radars back in 1984, when it was discovered by paleontologist Jose Bonaparte. It was located in the La Colonia Formation in Argentina during an expedition funded by the National Geographic Society. The remains were striking as they were well preserved, with only some parts being destroyed by weathering. Bonaparte instantly took notice to one of its most unique features, the horns, and quickly created the genus Carnotaurus, which translates to meat-eating bull, while the specific name, Sastery, honors the owner of the ranch in which the fossils were found. It was also eventually placed within the Abelisauridae, a family of theropod dinosaurs characterized by stocky hind limbs and decorated skulls. Despite possessing stocky hind limbs, the Carnotaurus was relatively light, yet quite large, being one of the largest of the Abelisauridae, with only the Pycnonamosaurus appearing to have been longer. The only known Carnotaurus was an adult that is estimated to have been anywhere from 24.6 to 26.2 feet in length, or or 7.5 to 8 meters, and the weight is believed to have been anywhere from 1.33 tons to 2.1 tons, showcasing its light build. But no one was fooled by its lightness, thanks to its intimidating and decorated skull, with the most eye-catching piece being its infamous horns. Its horns were situated right above its eyes, and were formed by its frontal bones, which extended to a length of 15 centimeters, or 5.9 inches. It is generally agreed that keratinous sheaths would have been present, but there are arguments on whether the keratin actually made the horns longer, as some paleontologists think not, while others believe it made them extremely longer. Another area of debate about the horns is the function, a tricky one to answer as it is the only bipedal animal with horns on its frontal bones. One theory is that they were used for social display, although their thickness indicates they were used physically. Many paleontologists think the Carnotaurus used its horns to fight others of its kind, similar to how rams use their horns. A study even found the horns could withstand the force of two Carnotaurus colliding at a speed of 19 feet per second or 5.7 meters per second, hinting at a design suited for fast and violent collisions. The neck and head also support this idea, as it possesses a relatively short head and muscular neck, two features that allowed for quick thrust and shock endurance. However, not all agree with this assumption, as some believe it would have instead been used for slowly pushing and shoving others, as seen in marine iguanas. The final theory, and most controversial, is that it would have used the horns to injure and kill small prey, relying on the theory that keratin made the horns much longer. But even if its horns were not weapons, the Carnotaurus had no need to worry, as it was equipped with another efficient killing tool, its mouth. Its jaw held 62 serrated, long, and slender teeth that were closely placed together, and the muscles attached to its head and jaws granted it to administer extremely rapid bites, while also withstanding a fair amount of stress when tugging on prey. There is no argument that its mouth was deadly. However, the arguing starts on what it hunted. Many paleontologists think the Carnotaurus specialized in hunting smaller prey. In this scenario, Carnotaurus would deliver quick blows to small prey, essentially spiking them to death, while occasionally taking down larger animals, hinted by its ability to tug with immense power. One study supports the small prey theory, as it showed the Carnotaurus having a relatively weak bite force of around 3,341 newtons, less than that of a tiger. However, some consider this idea revolting, finding Carnotaurus to actually have been a killer specialized in large prey. This group theorizes that its bite force was actually much stronger than the study showed, and that it did not spike prey to death, rather incorporating a technique developed by the Allosaurus. The short snout, serrated teeth and stronger back skull were all traits found in the Allosaurus, which killed large prey by attacking them with quick strikes that would tear them apart and induce death by massive blood loss. It's because of these shared traits that some think the Carnotaurus was a large game hunter, even possibly specializing in sauropods. Whatever it hunted, they would hope to be as fast as they came, as the Carnotaurus was a speed demon. The Carnotaurus had two unique features that allowed it to be extremely fast. 
One being its thigh bone. Its thigh bone had evolved in a way that gave the Carnotaurus a high bending capability while running. This bending and flexibility would have allowed it to withstand higher speeds. And its thigh bone structure has been found to have been more efficient than that of a human, although less than an ostrich. Its second secret to its speed was in the tail. It has long been believed that the locomotor muscle in the tail of dinosaurs, called the catofemoralis, was the top indicator of speed. And within the tail of most dinosaurs, the bones were shaped like a T, while the Carnotaurus had its bones shaped in a V, allowing this locomotor muscle to grow much larger than in most, resulting in the Carnotaurus being one of the fastest large theropods. It is believed it could have clocked in at an impressive 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers an hour, extremely fast for a large theropod and for a dinosaur in general. To put this into perspective, it is thought the Velociraptor would have been slower at 25 miles or 40 kilometers per hour. As a consequence of its great speed, it wasn't the best at making fast turns, meaning it was kind of like a giant meat-eating bullet on a one-way street. It's because of this incredible burst of speed and lack of turning ability that paleontologists think it would have hunted by ambushing prey and running them down in more or less of a straight line. It would have likely struck at high speeds with its mouth, as its arms were immensely small, being proportionally smaller than that of the T-Rex. Most consider them to be vestigial limbs, meaning they existed on the Carnotaurus without a function. However, some think they were of some use, as displayed in Prehistoric Planet, where the Carnotaurus used its arms as a form of colorful display. Along with its speed, another part of Carnotaurus that makes it stick out amongst the crowd is the skin. The Carnotaurus left lots of skin impressions behind, giving paleontologists a good idea of its texture. It appears to have been scaly and completely feathered it was also found that the body had large and randomly distributed conical studs which were surrounded by a network of small, elongated diamond-shaped scales which could have also been subcircular. Some believe these patches would have provided protection while hunting or during fights, while others think of it as more of an artistic feature that may have been quite colorful or held a pattern used to flirt or intimidate on a social level. The Carnotaurus was lucky that it only had to worry about others of its own kind, as it is highly believed to have been an apex predator in its kingdom of what is now South America. Hailing from the La Colonia formation, it is believed this theropod existed between 83.6 and 66 million years ago. The environment during that time was made up of partially enclosed coastal bodies of brackish water, with rivers flowing through, as well as tidal flats and coastal plains, where the climate would have most likely been a mix of dry and humid periods. One oddity about the Carnotaurus's habitat is that so far is the only officially described dinosaur, so no one is sure what it specifically lived alongside or hunted. This being said, fragmented remains of hadrosaurs, sauropods, Ankylosauria and other theropods, including a non-Carnotaurus abelisaurid, have been located in the formation. Along with the dinosaurs, other confirmed residents in the Carnotaurus's realm included three types of plesiosaurs and the same number of turtles, as well as numerous lungfish, crocodiles, snakes, lizards, and a surprising amount of mammals, as so far, 300 specimens of mammals have been found, including multi-tuberculata and genuses like the Regitherium. Being dated to 66 million years ago, the Carnotaurus was one of the last non-avian dinosaurs ever. One more achievement to its already impressive list.